Hi, welcome back to The Painted Mini. My name is Travis, I'm your host, and join me as I continue to paint all the characters in Core Space Firstborn. All right, so this time we are gonna paint all of the baddies in the Core Space box. So if you missed the last video, go ahead and click on the link above and get caught up. And we are gonna feature color shift paint from Vallejo today. And we're gonna do the aliens, we're gonna do the drones, and we're gonna paint the rock worms. So stick around. And remember, we're not gonna go all the way through with painting this time. We're not doing the basing. We're not doing the fine detail work. Uh, we'll go ahead and feature that when we actually do the play videos. So we have one more video after this one of painting, and then it's on to play in the game. So join me. All right, so this is the guy that we painted uh, with the Vallejo Black Gloss Primer. Uh, and they do recommend when you're using Color Shift Paint to use the Black Gloss. They say it works best, so I went with that. Uh, and I have actually tried to paint regular paint over Black Gloss and it seems to come out fine. Uh, it is a little more slick. And our guy's looking pretty good. So uh, let's take a look at the paint itself. So this is also from Vallejo and this is their Color Chef paints. Um, it is from a, a line of Color Chef. So this one is called Space Dust and it has its own range of colors. All of the stuff I've used has had a cool effect. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and oh man, I have to remember. I want to say I use the red gold for the aliens and I hope I'm right because I've already painted the other ones and I don't want to have one alien that's a different color than all of his comrades. Okay and this is again the red gold and I'm pretty sure this is the color I used before it kind of ended up green on the aliens but it looked pretty cool. All right and here we go. You see in my green, you get a little bit of like a white uh, residue when you use this, but for the most part, it just sort of dries out, goes away. Try not to put it on too thick, maybe. And with these, I'm really just trying to get the, their skin in this color, and then other gear and clothing. I'm sure I'm going to go over with something else. This is like the armored version of the alien. He's sort of the, the SF enforcer. He's got a little bit more armor than the others. He also has these blades. They're super simple. I've even gone ahead and some of the dashboard, they're these nice plastic uh, dashboards and mats that uh, come with a game well it's a dashboard and then there's also sort of a long um, board that holds pegs that's used to mark sort of the alert level uh, and the alien response those boards I've gone ahead and primed in gloss black and I think I'm gonna use uh, some of these funky colors on them I want to do everything in this it's one of those you have to kind of Hold yourself back. Okay, I think it'll be good for a coat and we'll just come back to it when we need to. I just wanted to show you the whole process. Okay, 
It definitely has that metallic sheen to it. Let's see.
dealing with some weird stuff. Yeah, it doesn't look like it matters how careful you are with this. It, they all look the same. It's their dry. I think it just kind of cures almost. And then it's a curing set. It reflects. Very cool. Perfect for a science fiction game like this. I also found it pretty cool for the Blade Runner thing. You can really draw attention to special weapons and armor. All right. It's supposed to be gold brown, but uh, it's very, very green. go ahead and get the rocks. I'm gonna paint them white for now. I'm gonna just use a big old nasty brush since I'm just kind of base coating. And I'm actually using for the first time I wanted to give it a try just because I went to the store and as usual all the white paint is sold out. Or the good ones. Uh, I was looking for a Vallejo. Instead I ended up with D&D Prismatic Dead White which is sold by Vallejo. It's a little less glossy, I know, uh, than the regular line, but it's also half as much quantity-wise. Hopefully it's a better quality, but I seriously have doubts since they're paying for that D&D &D IP. But it's what I have, so I'm gonna try it out. I have not been impressed with the Games Workshop whites this one I went with dead white. I don't want like a bright white because I tend to want to reserve that as sort of just a highlight color. Everything else that I'm going to do in white I'll go off white or just kind of a shade under pure white. So I'm just going to coat this so that I can then go in and hit it with another color. Maybe a contrast. I don't know if contrast would really be the answer on rock surface like this. I like it a lot for organic. 
sort of flesh and animal hide, fur. I'm not sure if it would really do what I want it to do with rock. I'm also not quite that picky. Remember, I'm really all about getting the game to the table. But if you don't use varnish, you just sort of paint your minis, get out, and use them to play a game or two. You have to be a little careful as far as where you grab them. But then you can always go back later on and hit it with another level of detail. Okay, let's take a second here and look at some of the guys I've already painted. This is the partner of the one that I just did. They're the same, same type of alien. And it looks like I did use the right color. You can see that they are essentially the same. That's good. All right, uh, these are the drones. And the drones are usually the first ones you encounter because they are just sort of flying around the map, uh, following a prescriptive pattern uh, in a pretty low key posture. And then as they detect things, they start ramping up and alerting others to come in. Uh, if you can stealth around and sort of avoid alerting these guys, you can get pretty far without having to uh, get into combat or anything. Once you start firing shots, of course, the alert alertness ramps up exponentially and more and more baddies come along and they get bigger and meaner. Uh, here's some more different ones. And there are these guys. I kind of wanted to do a rich kind of a red cloak on these. But I'd say that the uh, it came out real dark. You, you can see that it has a little bit of sheen to it, but it's just too dark. I might have to, I'm thinking thinking about painting back over this with uh, white with a little bit of metallic medium. So kind of a silver white. And then going over it again with kind of shiny red. See if I can get a brighter red out of it. Okay, and I have the worms. So these guys, I kind of used a, not the most graceful, but sort of a gradated pattern of color shift paints along the back carapace. And then I just use a regular uh, paint, sort of a loam uh, on the inside. Just create sort of a texture contrast there. And then they're actually busting out of the ground here. So I need to uh, go in and do the ground. And what else do we have here? Okay, we have two hunters that I haven't actually painted yet. And I believe these are the last two things from the core box that I need to paint. I love these minis, they're really cool. Uh, I went ahead and did uh, the Zenithal highlight on these. And when I did these, I did the typical gray Zenithal, and then I used the white ink for sort of a third uh, tone. And you can See, I shot this one from the front a little bit with a white. And then this one, I shot really strong from head on. It's almost like somebody's uh, shining a light on him. <laughs> so that should come out pretty cool as long as I don't use uh, thick paint to where the zenithal still comes out. Love some of the detail of the watch. Um, the main guys here. First we have our little droid. I think every team, it looks like they're giving a droid to each team. Uh, this is the droid. 
kind of went with this sort of uh, poppy modern blue orange white I might actually put a little gloss on this one just to kind of gloss up that plastic a little bit I still want it to look weathered you can see I used a color shift on his face because it's sort of a monitor I don't know if you can catch it on the camera and also the front of his data pad but it's really hard to see that and so one of our guys again I went with mostly it's pretty close to what the box art and the uh, game art looks like definitely pushing this sherbet color scheme here that sort of orange and pink is the white rifle just put some little orange highlights in there and it almost has like a I think it's supposed to be like a trucker's cap but this model the bill and all it really doesn't look like a trucker's cap it looks more like a bicyclist cap or a painter's cap either way and then we have I think she is the leader of this faction she definitely looks like she is a all business armored up she has these shoulder guns. Yes, that's my dog. And that's pretty much all the mini. Oh, wait, one more big guy. Every faction also has some sort of a big bruiser. Uh, this one's an alien, of course. He's got a bionic arm, a sweet scarf. <laughs> Gotta have that. Lots of gear. Okay, I'm gonna go rescue my dog. All right, so we're almost done as far as painting goes. Let's see how this guy's drawing here. Yeah, he is looking good. All right, thanks for joining me today, and we will go ahead and resume this with the Hunters, and I'll post that next week. See you soon. Bye-bye.